left hooks, right jabs, and the center stage of cinema. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 boxing movies. The more you get hit, the harder you fight. I get it. Let's go! Only now you've taken way too many hits hey. before you get off. For this list, we are focusing exclusively on feature films whose plots are centered around boxing. Uh, you're in trouble, man. But that means that documentaries and short films are excluded. Number 10, Girl Fight. Girls don't have the same power as boys. Michelle Rodriguez made her film debut in this Brooklyn based film and stunned critics with her natural acting chops. I've come to defend myself. <laughs> After all, there had never been a boxing flick quite like Girl Fight, as Diana Guzman attempts to deal with family problems by hitting the bag at the local gym. Nothing stays still in the ring. Move around the back more. The star's natural charisma connected with all types of underdogs, and the inherent grittiness of the film enforced the idea that women are perfectly capable of getting down in the ring. Women have a lower center of gravity. Maybe they're more grounded once they build strength. It makes them a different kind of boxer. Rodriguez trained for months to play the ambitious character, and she followed up her unforgettable debut by appearing in the 2001 film The Fast and the Furious. Come on, boy. Get better than this. Number 9, Fat City. Based on the 1969 novel by Leonard Gardner, this film about a down and out alcoholic revived the career of legendary director John Huston. You're gonna go up for a drink and you're gonna leave me here! I'm fighting in a week, you think I take a drink? Billy Wayman, let me get my shoe! When Stacy Keach's Billy Tully settles in Stockton, California, he meets a young boxing prospect played by Jeff Bridges. I was sparring with this young kid. He's a good young prospect. He could make a lot of money someday if he was handled right. However, after both men become literally and figuratively wrecked by life, they discover that perhaps they're cut from the same cloth despite a difference in age. Listen, you got everything going for you, you know that? You're young and you got a wife and you got a kid. You're a little boy. Yeah, and you got a good reach, too. <laughs> with each facing their own personal dilemmas, the two men come to grips with the idea that Fat City can only be reached by graduating from the School of Hard Knocks, if at all. Can I buy a cup of coffee? Yeah, let's go get some coffee. Number eight, The Boxer. 14 years I was locked up. In a world where violence reigns supreme, one man hopes to achieve peace through powerful left hooks. Okay, that's not the official tagline for the boxer. However, Jim Sheridan's film does tackle some very real societal problems. Move it. Upon serving 14 years in the clink and returning to his native Belfast, Danny Flynn realizes that his Belfast associates continue to live by the code of the IRA. I'm not a killer, Maggie. This place makes me want to kill. Even so, he laces up and reconnects with old friends. But the looming threat of trouble cannot be escaped. You're a dangerous f***ing woman. With Daniel Day-Lewis and Emily Watson in the lead roles, the boxer featured two acclaimed performers at their best. You still have it. What? My soul. For what it's worth. Number seven, The Hurricane. Aruba, Hurricane Kata has defeated the Walter Wayne champion of the world. Capping off an illustrious career, Norman Jewison directed this film about a real-life boxer wrongly convicted of murder. The same man Bob Dylan sang about in his 1975 song. Look. I'm innocent, that's why. Seven years, you're goddamn right in seven years. Just get me out of here. I want a new trial. Denzel Washington starred as Reuben Carter, who was falsely identified in a Patterson, New Jersey triple murder and spent almost two decades in jail. We all believe in your innocence. I've been innocent for 16 years. That's how long I've been in here. With the help of a young boy and his Canadian mentors, reason trumped over racism and Hurricane Carter was released. He put me in prison. Love's gonna bust me out. The film went on to receive multiple Academy Award nominations, 
and the real-life Reuben Carter continued to fight for civil rights until his death in 2014. Mr. Carter, now that you're out, are you still going to be the Hurricane? Oh, I'll always be the Hurricane. And the Hurricane is beautiful. Number 6, Ali. The champ is here! It's not the greatest boxing film of all time, but it's about the greatest. With Will Smith at the center of the proverbial ring, director Michael Mann chronicled a turbulent 10-year period during which Cassius Clay was transformed into the American icon Muhammad Ali. From this day forward, you will be known as Muhammad Ali. From classic boxing matches to the assassination of Malcolm X, Ali painted a poignant portrait of America, as one man established his legacy in and out of the spotlight. You my enemy, not no Chinese, no Viet Cong, no Japanese. You my poser when I want freedom. You my poser when I want justice. You my poser when I want equality. While not a definitive biopic of Muhammad Ali, the film was noted for its visceral effect on viewers. In other words, Will Smith is a bad man. Bad man? I'm bad. Number five, Cinderella Man. The Cinderella Man. Cinderella Man? Yeah. Oh, I like it. Russell Crowe may be most known for his fictional character in Gladiator. <laughs> but his portrayal of a real-life Irish-American boxer arguably revealed his greatest work as an actor. Well, if it ain't Cinderella Man. <laughs> Directed by Ron Howard, Cinderella Man told the story of James J. Braddock, a man who suffered during the Great Depression, but somehow managed to overcome the odds and fight his way to victory. Oh, it's not fine. No, it's not. It's what the hell? You don't tell me? What I the owe hell everybody kind of money, Joe. I owe everybody money. With Renee Zellweger as the devoted wife and Craig Bierka as the utterly punchable Max Bayer, Cinderella Man reached into the hearts of viewers, ripped them apart, and pieced them back together. All within 144 minutes. <laughs> Number four, The Fighter. The real-life Mickey Ward reached boxing glory through his trilogy of fights with the late Arturo Gotti. But it was David O. Russell's film that introduced his remarkable story to millions of moviegoers. I'm the one fighting, okay? Not you, not you, and not you. Portrayed by Mark Wahlberg, Ward serves as the calming force of a chaotic film for which Christian Bale earned an Academy Award for his performance as Ward's brother and trainer, Dickie Eklund. The story of redemption highlighted the strength of familial bonds, along with the devastation of watching a loved one sink to rock bottom. In the end, the fighter left viewers speechless and anxious for a new chapter. Get the fuck out of here! Screw up now! Fight, you, you, Charlene! Number three, Million Dollar Baby. Maggie Fitzgerald? Well, Maggie Fitzgerald, what's up? And then there was Eastwood. Thought you might be interested in training me. I don't train girls. Maybe you should. People see me fat, say I'm pretty tough. Girly, tough ain't enough. By teaming up with the remarkable Hilary Swank, the growling icon offered a blow to the gut with his unorthodox take on the female boxer. When Maggie Fitzgerald shows up at an LA gym, she forges a turbulent relationship with a snarling trainer. And while the collaboration was seemingly built for the ring, the duo becomes intertwined in a story that extends far beyond it. Because I know if you train me right, I'm gonna be a champ. I seen you looking at me. Yeah, out of pity. Don't you say that. Don't you say that if it ain't true. Million Dollar Baby hit all the right beats of a typical boxing film and then dropped a heavy dose of reality for a lasting effect. <laughs> Number two, Rocky. <laughs> Before the release of this cinematic classic, most moviegoers knew Sylvester Stallone as Machine Gun Joe Viterbo from the 1975 film Death Race 2000. <laughs> 
what they didn't know is that the Italian Stallion had written a script that would forever change the makeup of the American sports movie. I love you. I love you. Based on the idea of the American dream, Rocky unveiled the next great movie star and inspired a nation of working class heroes to push a little harder. It really don't matter if I lose this fight. It really don't matter if this guy opens my head either. The film captures the gritty lifestyle of its Italian-American character, yet there are enough light-hearted moments to reel in the average viewer. Listen, kid, you, you lay off that pet shop day. Women weaken legs. Truly a pop culture experience, Rocky has all the right moves. Before we step into the ring with our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Action! In the morning, I splash it on, and it surrounds my face with class. Cut! Number one, Raging Bull. <laughs> By the end of the 70s, both Robert De Niro and Martin Scorsese had established themselves as elite names in cinema. And they unforgettably turned back the clock with the aesthetically profound Raging Bull. Hey, Ray. Never went down, Ray. You never got me down, Ray. For the character study of middleweight boxer Jake LaMotta, De Niro gained 60 pounds, while Scorsese and his crew offered a master class on cinematic art direction. The filmmaker initially shunned the idea of making a boxing film, but Paul Schrader's screenplay and De Niro's enthusiasm ultimately sealed the deal. Why didn't you tell me, huh? Did you f my brother? Huh? Get off Did me! You Pig? Did you? Huh? No! In the absence of a feel-good plot, Raging Bull became the definitive boxing movie through exceptional acting and a transcendent filmmaking process. Go get him, champ. Do you agree with our list? I must break you. What's your favorite boxing movie? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You throw a punch like you're taking up the ass. Come on. Harder. Harder. Thank <music> you.